everybody and welcome back to my podcast Esme's Country Life. Before we begin I just want to let you know this is actually part two of an episode all about my worst ever falls off a horse so if you haven't listened to part one um, I'd recommend going listening to that because I do say some really funny kind of stories and things um, but also to make sure that this episode makes sense. Um, so anyway um, before we also start I want to say a huge thank you to the sponsors of the podcast Red Post. Red Post is an equestrian and country store that not only sell in the UK but also all over the world so if you're looking for something new um, horse your country so be sure to head to redpostequestrian.co.uk also in today's podcast I'm going to be mentioning my sponsors Charles Owen who sell helmets quite a lot and I just wanted to say how important it is um, when you do buy a new riding helmet to get it checked by a professional so um, at Red Post they do have qualified professionals for helmet fitting so you can book an appointment for that but anyway um Let's get into today's episode where I talk about my worst ever fall ever off Joey, my horse. So um, I had a really bad fall on Joey quite a few years ago now. Um, he was five or six at the time, so quite a young horse. And this was during COVID as well. So we were training at home and um, we were going over this oxer. And um, I can't remember... like. Um, this story is a little bit blurry to me but for multiple different reasons number one it was quite a traumatic event um so I felt like my brain like you know when you have a traumatic event your brain kind of likes to make you not think about it too much but also um I did hit my head quite hard so that probably explains quite a lot too um anyway we were going over this oxa down the long side of our arena and um for whatever reason Joey did a dodgy jump over it I can't remember if that's because you know he's a bit he was a baby horse at the time so he was a little bit bambi on ice, gangly legs, he knocked a pole, or if like either we chipped into it or got a long one. Anyway, he knocked a pole and he was also going through a bit of a baby teenage phase at that time. So after knocking the pole, he kind of like my instructor always says this says this phrase, but like threw his teddies out the pram. He kind of just was like had like a little bit of a strop, a little bit of a like a frustrated, oh my goodness, I knocked a pole, like kind of thing. Um and while he did that, he basically just zoomed I think I lost my reins, I think I lost my stirrups. He obviously was running towards the arena fence at the time and thought, I'm not going to jump that and I'm not going to go through it like a sensible horse would. So he was like, I'm going to dip. So he kind of dipped to the side. I obviously with um, momentum carried on going straight forwards and I went into the arena fence. So um, if you can imagine like an arena fence, it's kind of like a like a right angle. So my head actually kind of, I think it hit like the top kind of edge so that was not great um so obviously I was wearing a helmet and then I also hit my ribs as well now I feel like when you have a bad fall it's never like a day which seems like a big day like it wasn't like it was just a normal I can't even remember what day of the week it was but again hit my head very hard but it was just like a normal just day I was just like oh we'll do like a chilled session I might put some jumps up that kind of thing do some jumping at the end and, like it wasn't anything special like I that day I didn't wake up thinking you know I'm gonna have a pretty serious injury today or a pretty serious fall it just kind of happened and I feel like when bad things happen in your life it's one of those things that you can never predict it just kind of happens well anyway that's how life's happened to me but um so I had this really bad fall not only yeah I hit my head I also hit my ribs so I broke a rib at first I didn't really realize I realized I broke a rib because um my like my family members have broken ribs before and they're like oh my goodness like you would know if you broke a rib you wouldn't have been able to get back on Joey like you would have been in severe pain and I was like well in the mornings when I get out of bed like when I sit up I feel like I've been shot or I feel like someone's stabbing into me and then um my um, dad, who used to be a doctor, felt my ribs and he was like, oh, I can feel a good old lump there. I think actually, sorry, I'm feeling it now. I feel that sounds really weird, but I think that there might still be like a little bit of a bump there left where, you know, obviously it cracked and then healed over, but didn't, you know, heal over healed over with a little bit of a lump to protect it let's say that um sometimes like on really cold days I feel like I can feel it I don't know if that's like a thing but anyway um so yeah I on the actual day of the fall straight afterwards which was which was absolutely stu- stupid of me shouldn't have done this I thought oh dear 
I've fallen, like, this is just my natural reaction whenever I fall off. And as I said with the previous episode, I've always been very much like, time to get back on the horse. Like, if you don't get back on the horse, it's a bad thing. When actually sometimes it's probably a good idea just to, like, take a breather. Probably I should have switched my helmet. That was not a, not a good idea. Um, I definitely should have put a different helmet on. I was... Well, I was probably a little bit concussed at the time, so I probably wasn't thinking very clearly. So I was like, oh no, I need to get back on Joey. I need to just like at least canter around, jump across pole, like for confidence reasons, when actually probably shouldn't have done that. I was all bruised. Like I was like, I felt like I was half purple. I was all bruised at my side. I think I was bruised on my knee as well. Like I looked like I had been in the wars. Um, And it wasn't really until afterwards when I had like a hot bath and I was like, looked at myself, I was like, ooh, that was probably quite serious. So um, I was very chill about it. I think I just put something on my story, like had my first fall off Joey, because I'm pretty sure it was my first fall. And um, so Charles Owen were like, are you okay? Like, did you hit your head? And I was like, actually, you know what? I think I did hit my head quite hard. And I'll tell you what, I hit the fence so hard that my grandma, who lives next door, heard this bang and came out and was like uh what was that noise like what's the commotion and my dad was like oh it's just Esme you know hitting the arena fence after falling off her horse um so anyway I it was one of those things where I was like "Mm, yeah that was a little bit not so good like but I feel like I've just always been such a positive and confident rider I just thought to myself ah I'll be fine you know ah, I'll move on like I've fallen off so many times before like probably over 100 like it's just like another one this was just like probably a little bit more on the bad side because I've actually broken a bone and hit my head um so anyway Charles Owen actually took in my helmet I don't know if they still do this but um I'm pretty sure that they're quite willing to take in people's helmets and do um kind of like a, a check on them so they'll like cut them in half see how it's kind of worked because they're always doing research to try and um for like helmet safety and making riding safer so anyway they took my helmet in and that winter I kind of had like not a break from show jumping but because it was covid we couldn't go and do an arena hire couldn't go and have lessons so it was just kind of training at home so I think I just like did a few like cross poles and jumps but nothing like not like a proper course I kind of just really focused that winter on improving Joey's flat work again because he was quite a young horse at the time five six so again wasn't pushing him too hard at that time at that point of time um and doing lots of hacking for his fitness so we were just kind of like vibing and then it was when we went when things started opening up again was also around the time where I could go to the Charles own factory um for a visit and they did a helmet analysis with me And I think it was around that point of time where I kind of realised actually how bad my fall was. Um, Obviously, most people, when they fall off, they don't get invited to a helmet factory and get to see a scientist completely analyse your helmet and analyse your fall. So, like, when it came to riding, like, I wasn't really that scared of walking, trotting, cantering. Actually, cantering, I'll I'll get into that in a sec. But, like, because I wasn't really jumping much, I just didn't really think much of it, to be honest. And anyway, we... um, I went to the the factory, talked to the scientist, and he asked me, like, did I go to hospital? How long was I concussed for? And things like that. And I was just like, mate, I just had a bath that evening. Like, I just... I had a cup of tea and some biscuits and got on with it kind of thing. And he was like deadly serious and then that's kind of when it all really hit me how bad my fall actually was um I, I don't I don't think this is the actual official name but they have this area in the Charles Own factory that I like to call the helmet hall of shame or I don't know I don't know if shame's the right word but basically it's all it's like lots of professional or sponsored riders of theirs and their helmets and some not so nice things that have happened to them so I was gonna say one of the most interesting I don't know if interesting is the right word but I'd say the helmet that's the most sort of mind-boggling to look at belongs to the um, international US um, show jumping rider Laura Kraut now um, she had a fall where after she fell off the horse actually stood on her head which is not very good at all and the horse is actually wearing studs so if you can imagine like a metal horseshoe and if you can also imagine like footballer boots with studs in if you can basically imagine a horseshoe with metal studs in um one of the studs which honestly like when you look at it it just looks like a big bullet um 
went into her helmet. Luckily, with the helmet that she was wearing, it's designed so um, that spike point didn't go all the way through. You can imagine how horrific it would have been if it had gone all the way through. But um, that's why, again, it's so important to do your research when buying a helmet and make sure that you're getting the you're getting a helmet with the best safety standards because not all helmets are tested for a spike point. Um, also, yeah, that obviously was very kind of scary. And again, my fault, um, a lot of helmets aren't tested for, which was kind of like the, the 90 degree angle of an arena fence. And I kind of hit the spiky bit, if you, can, if you know what I mean. So again, really please do your research before when you buy a helmet or before you buy a helmet because a lot of the time when helmets are tested they're often only tested for landing on the ground which is a flat surface but with horses you know that not everything goes straight forward even me who's fallen off a hundred times or over a hundred times there could be just that one time like I did where I landed on kind of like a spiky point so yeah please please do your research that is something that I wish I could have told my younger self and something that I didn't realize was so important also keep in mind when choosing your helmet there are like this is something that also makes me really cringe now when thinking about it a lot of helmets on the market are designed to be really like ventilated because obviously nobody wants a sweaty head but when you think of those vents and when I think of that stud I, it just makes me like wonder what would ha what would have happened if she had a helmet with a big old gap in where there was a vent like oh I don't know it gives me the shivers a little bit so um yeah please think about those sort of things um also yeah, so anyway, we went to, we saw the, the Hall of Shame, the Hall, hall of Horrors, and um, saw all the machines and them testing helmets. And yeah, anyway, for some reason, I think just something happened in my brain where I kind of realised, oh my goodness, if I wasn't wearing that helmet, I could have been so much worse off. I, I don't know, my, like my life could have changed forever in that instant. So... And again, horses are fly animals, however well you know them, even though I probably hadn't even had Joey a year then, or maybe just over a year or something like that. Um, like I know Casper so well, and even every now and again, he has like a little interesting time, like horses are fly animals, and there might be a little time where things don't quite go right. But then again, like, I don't want to put anyone off riding by telling all these stories. Um, a lot of the time, it is an absolutely incredible sport, and I, I wouldn't you know change the world or wouldn't quit it ever but um anyway so yeah I I was not go going through a very confident stage I think also because like obviously I don't want to sound like I'm complaining about this like not being able to go training or have lessons with an instructor because there was a lot worse things going on in the world back during um the pandemic but anyway so I think also one of the other reasons why I was feeling less confident I wasn't having, having as many lessons I had this young horse that so was kind of training all on my own and um where so yeah I really started to not feel confident when jumping and I remember I, ha I think I had this photo shoot where I had to jump and I, beforehand like just the thought of jumping made me feel physically ill like I was gonna throw up kind of thing so I had lots when I could have lessons I had lessons and um slowly brought my confidence up like we took everything back to basics so I did like poles first and then um cross poles and I kind of like the best way I can describe it is do everything until it becomes boring I think that's my best advice because there was a stage where I was like mm, just doing poles on the ground like this is a little bit boring now like it's getting too easy let's like push myself a little bit um and like put them to cross poles which if you told past me like I was scared of cr jumping cross poles I'd be like girl get a hang of yourself like pull yourself together I think when I was younger and when I was super super confident I'd never had like a traumatic or bad fall I think I just thought people who weren't as confident I just I don't know I it's not like it was a choice but I just thought like I don't know I thought it was like people who were scared of roller coasters I was like come on just like be brave it'll be fine which I know like now I've had a traumatic fall like if anybody said to, that to I don't know I feel like it's one of those things where it's really difficult to describe what it's like until it's actually happened to you anyway going back to the Charles Owen factory um the scientist who was analyzing my helmet um because again I, I didn't really really realize it was so really bad because the outside looked completely fine it looked like a brand new helmet it looked like there was nothing wrong and it wasn't until they cut it in half and opened it up that you could actually see that the helmet really had done its job all of the lining which is kind of like if you can imagine again the crumple zone of a car it's meant to sort of crumb 
crumple because it takes in all that energy it takes in all that force and all that impact of you kind of hitting something um and there was a huge crack down the liner and I, I was just gobsmacked I was just like oh my goodness I did not realize that yeah my helmet had a huge crack on so again that is another reason why it's so important if you do you know um hit your helmet against anything please 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 get it like just get a new one it's not worth it like if you think how much like I feel like some of the cheapest helmets from Charles Owen are around £100 or just under. I feel like my brain and my life is worth at least that. So, yeah, please, please, please buy a new helmet if you fall off and hit your head. Once you've fallen off a horse and you've hit your head, um, it's taken in that impact. It's only designed and it can only physically do that once. It won't be able to take in that impact as well the second time. So, yeah, please, please replace your helmet once you've had an accident so anyway um back to my confidence with joey so again we were kind of going through a little bit of a trickier time where he was a young horse and i think it was our first winter together and i didn't realize how difficult he was going to find it during winter being like cooped up in the stable a little bit more because of bad weather um also it being like very windy um very rainy all that kind of stuff because I bought him spring of 2020. Yeah, spring of 2020. Sounds weird saying that without like a number afterwards. I'm so used to saying 2023. Anyway, um, so yeah. And I think after that fall, like there were a few times where I would, when I would ask for our canter transition, like going up into canter, he would, I think maybe he was like, finding it quite hard work like he was going through like a weird stage where he actually had like a bit of a growth spurt at this age when we first got him he was advertised to us at 15 3 16 hands and he's now i'd say 16 1 like i've had a few people who are like no he's definitely 16 2 i haven't actually proper properly measured him for a good while so he has grown quite a bit and he kind of grew all this muscle and i think he kind of was in this weird phase where he went from gangly youngster to power power I was gonna say power horse then <laughs> that sounds like a power ranger like powerhouse kind of horse like a proper sports horse and he just had all this kind of like he built up all this muscle all the work I'd done with him and he kind of didn't really know how to use it so there was this time where he was just really really fresh and he would just be a bit I don't know it sounds mean but it was still a bit of a nightmare really and um he basically would do this thing where when I'd ask for canter, when I was cantering, he would just like leap up in the air. And I think for a while I almost had like a bit of, it sounds really dramatic, but it was almost like a trigger for me when he would suddenly speed up in canter or if we would like suddenly do a canter transition. I think I still have that a little bit because I had a show jumping lesson with my instructor a few weeks back. And I think like one of the things that I need to work on with Joey is he's not very good at getting like that big show jumping canter like he's very lazy and chillaxed and relaxed nowadays and he kind of just goes with the flow and it's kind of getting him more alert and getting him more like in the zone in the jumping zone like he's kind of like sometimes it's almost like he looks at the jump bef like last minute like and I need to get him looking at the jump and eager like a little bit beforehand so it's just kind of getting him going and he's definitely one of those horses the more I do with him when it comes to show jumping like the better he is he, I, it's almost like if I don't jump him for a while so after Joey had his injury I was really worried about jumping him for the first time because I thought he is just gonna be mental because there was this phase where he would just go over a jump and then he would kind of put his head down to the ground canter off put his back legs up in the air which obviously would unsettle my balance and um there are a few times I came off that way so it was almost like a trigger for me if after a jump he zoomed away when actually that's what I need to work on I need him to think more forward so I think for a while I've been kind of in my comfort zone quite happily doing like a very low p slow canter when actually now we're doing bigger fences I need to be getting that faster canter, which I'm a little bit scared of, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but we're getting there. By the end of the session, we had that big canter. My instructor did this really weird exercise with me where she put this jump up to like, I think it was like 120 or something or 140, like something ridiculous where I was like, obviously not gonna be jumping that. I think it was like 130 or 140, anyway. And she was like, I want you to ride round with a good enough canter to jump this jump. And I was like, girl, 
what are you what are you doing here and she made me get that big canter and we got it and obviously we did not jump the 140 jump but um she then when I had that big canter made me go down around and do the course with that sort of big canter and it felt so much better and it's just again I think doing a canter transition for a while scared me a little bit because when I first took Joey on the bridle paths after his sort of excited period um he, like he would there was this one period where we would go for a canter on the bridle path and he'd always do like a little squeal and like buck into canter and I, there was a what yeah definitely a period of time where I was scared to do a canter transition in case that happened when actually it was just you know a young excitable horse but I think because of my injury my injury and falling off and you know my trauma it just really triggered something in me like it would just like this fear would just suddenly hit me so anyway Hopefully I'm getting over that now and I had a really good jumping session the other day where we were getting that bigger canter and um, another thing that really helped me that one of my other instructors said was to be more forward she said to me pretend I'm jumping this oxer because another thing that I was kind of scared of not scared of but my least favorite thing at the moment is jumping an oxer or like when you go short side of an arena to a long side so you have to go around like a tight corner to an oxer and I think it's because when Joey's a little bit more slow I have less energy but also if I have more energy around a corner then I feel like he's going to be all long so it's like it's really is a bit of a, a brain like you have to think a lot with Joey to make sure I have enough hand and enough leg to make sure that he's contained and has this bouncy canter but also has enough power for it as well and without getting too long and too deep and anyway riding is difficult <laughs> let's just say that but um she said pretend that this fence isn't an oxer pretend you're doing cross country and it's a brush fence how would you jump a brush fence she would she said like you would just go fast go at it like it doesn't matter if your horse knocks it because it's a brush your horse can brush its legs through the main thing is that you're going fast and you have that forward energy. So that's how I did that oxer, which normally for an oxer, like, that sounds like, no, 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 that is not what you do. But um, anyway, I jumped it like that and it felt so much easier. So that was my bit of advice where I had a little bit of a, like, a click where I was like, oh, everything's kind of fallen into place a little bit more. So uh, we're getting there. Hopefully I will do a little jumping update video because as you guys know, um, I've been bringing Joey back into jumping after his injury. Um, he's had sometimes, he's had like a few like little breaks from jumping and things and some more intense times with the jumping, depending on what I'm doing with work and that kind of thing. But so far, like we're having weekly jumping lessons and it's been going really well. So hopefully it should be all good. But it was weird how, again, just doing a canter transition or just, I think like my instruct like that day where I had that lesson where she was like jump the 140 jump I was almost just like part of me was just like cling not clinging onto the reins because I was unbalanced or anything like that but part of it was just, I was just worried that he was gonna zoom off after a jump when he hasn't done that in like well over a year so I don't know why I think it's because I had a really bad experience at that one arena and it was the same like arena hire I think that's probably what it was that triggered me I guess but anyway it was good in the end I'm getting there. We're all doing well. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how my confidence has been going. It's been weird saying that I've had another little kind of confidence blip, I guess you could say. It wasn't like a bad one. It wasn't like, oh, I don't want to do jumping anymore or oh, I don't want to do cantering anymore. It just felt a little bit more scary than I was expecting. So now obviously that was quite intense talking about all of that. And I'm a very positive you know, person. So I thought I would tell some funny and lighthearted stories um, from my friends and their falling off stories. Now I will keep everyone anonymous, so don't you worry. But some of these stories are pretty funny and I feel like everyone has at least like one falling off story that's a little bit more on the funny side. So um, there was one friend at Pony Club Camp. This was probably the best one. Um, she was doing a drop fence and so basically it's when you're on like a higher bit of ground and then it goes lower but the lower bit's into water so she was doing a drop into water and her horse did the biggest leap ever into the water and um, she actually landed in the water bless her oh my goodness like she was such a good sport about it like she was laughing and we all found it really funny because this was ages ago this was probably like 10 11 at the time but yeah that wasn't so good one also I can't remember or not if that was the year where Casper pooed in the water in the water jump because I don't know what it is Casper whenever he I think it's like a maybe it's a horse thing but 
he will always poo whenever he's in water. If he's at the beach, he'll poo in the sea. If he's in a river, he'll poo in the river. But the thing is, Casper is also one of those horses where he will never poo, like, at all. Like, in the sense, I have owned this horse, like, almost 10 years, and he has pooed in our arena twice. Joey, on the other hand, will poo every single time I go into the arena. He does one lap, and he's like, yep, got it out of my system, ready to go, like, just going to crack this one out for you kind of thing and it's like oh my goodness like it even became a running joke with my instructor when I would ride at hers that he would always poo like even again like we would hack to her her yard he could have done it on the hack no he would literally save it every time every week for her arena when we did our first lap round and she was like I'm gonna leave that there actually because we're doing jumping today and I want you to do a jump off turn and go inside the poo so the poo actually almost like it came became a marker so I guess I could thank Joey for improving my riding by pooing the, in the arena but anyway no I felt so bad for her because she probably landed into a very pooey water jump it does make you think how how many horses do you reckon have pooed in water jumps actually I think J- Casper and Joey have definitely both pooed in the water at Hickstead for the cross-country schooling. Like, they definitely both have. So, there we go. If you've ever fallen off in that water, you'll know that you will be swimming around with my horse's poo. Um, Another interesting story was at Pony Club Camp, there was this one guy, and um, he, when he fell off, I can't even remember, it was, like, such an undramatic, like, fall. Like, you know when it kind of happens in slow motion, you're like, you definitely could have just, like, clinged on, like, your horse was walking, but you kind of just, like, flop off anyway. Um, when he fell off, he ripped his jodhpurs, (laughs) and we all saw his pants. So, um, it was a group with, like, all girls, one boy. We obviously were in hysterics, found it. The funniest thing... Um, I'm trying to think of some other interesting stories. There was like once my friend, she had a new saddle and she wasn't sure what like girth hole it should be on and she forgot to do up her girth. So her girth was a lot looser and we were riding around and she was literally just standing there and I think her horse did like a little spook, a little sidestep and she ended up going all the way like upside down, was like hanging from underneath her horse's belly, like holding on a bit like a like a bat almost, like hanging from a cave. So that was quite a funny one as well. So um, I would actually love to hear um, some of your like interesting funny like falling off stories so if you're listening on or watching on youtube then leave me a comment if not send me a dm maybe that could be like a podcast episode would you guys like that me reading out your interesting funny or interesting falls and like horsey experiences i feel like that could be a really fun episode although i'm not very being dyslexic i'm not the best at reading so i might have to read them a few times it might take me a while to film it because i'll have to read it a few times to really get it in my head and then i won't sound like a robot because i'm not very good at reading out loud great reading in my head but i think it's because my brain has like too much that i need to think about i'm thinking so much about getting the words right that i can't use my brain capacity to be able to like make it sound interesting or engaging so anyway, I feel like that could be an interesting one. But um, I'm trying to think if there are any more embarrassing, like, falling off stories on my part. There was definitely one time where I think I fell in, like, an actual horse poo. Like, I fell off and went splat. Because I remember getting up and I had cream pony club job poos on. And I had a bit of a poo stain on my bum. Not even stable stain remover could save me on that day. So, also... I was definitely that kid at Pony Club where, like, the you know, like, there would always be, like, a lesson after you and, like, you'd see them all, like, ride past and there was this one mum and I think she was, like, at the time I was a little bit offended but she was like, oh, you're covered in sand and I see you've fallen off and I was like, you don't need to say it, like, loudly. Like, I was just hoping nobody would notice but I think she said it in, like, a nice way. She was kind of like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine but I was kind of like, why do you have to say it in front of the big girls that are in the group after me kind of thing? Um... But yeah, there are some interesting, interesting, I feel like horses, they humble you. They, even if, yeah, there could be one day where you feel like the best rider ever, the next day you're eating dirt or maybe even horse poo. Hopefully not. Hopefully, hopefully just a little bit. Hopefully you don't eat anything at all. I mean, that sounded weird. Hopefully you do not eat the dust because you don't face plant, but... There are, there are, we, we will face plants sometimes, even when I'm walking down the street and I trip. That's happened to me before. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, thank you for listening to my podcast today. If you're currently going through a confidence knock as well, I hope you get through it. I hope you're doing well. Um, again, just keep doing things until it becomes boring. Everyone gets their confidence back at different speeds and different levels and different rates. So you're doing you're doing great. 
I believe in you. But anyway, um, thank you for listening to today's podcast. Thank you again to Red Post for sponsoring today's video. And again, check your helmets. After listening to this podcast, I want you to check your helmet. I want you to check the safety standard. Check when you last bought it. Like if it's over five years, get yourself a new helmet, please, please, please. And think to yourself, have I ever had a fall where my helmet has hit something or you've had an impact? So anyway, please stay safe out there. Riding is really good fun, but you know, a little freak accident here and there can happen. So stay safe and thanks for listening. Bye.